We have taken this place, and we intend to stay. So be it. Soviet director Roman Kalman is given total access to Giap's army to help him tell the story of the battle. The French have made a critical error, assuming that Dien Bien Phu is safe from attack by heavy armor and artillery. General Giap. I ordered our 351st Engineering Artillery Division to toil day and night to widen the 82-kilometer trail to Dien Bien Phu for our motorized vehicles. Then they built a 15-kilometer track through the mountains so we could haul our artillery to the front by hand. French appoint Colonel Christian de Castries as commander of Dien Bien Phu. The battle that will be remembered by the veterans as 55 days of hell will soon begin. No quarter will be given, none will be asked for. Suan Nia, a Viet Minh officer. It took us about 45 days. We marched at night and rested during the day. Sometimes we just slept on the roadside and dug our own foxholes against enemy attacks from the air. Viet Minh Captain Chun Van Hiro. The French were physically bigger and had many weapons. But we had something we could use against them, our courage. We were determined to fight until the end because they came here to steal our land. March 13th, 1954. The assault on the French stronghold of the MBM Fu begins. not resolve the threat to their airfield. Their porcupine defense had lost a vital element, its strength in the air. They could only reinforce their units with parachute drops, and they could not get their wounded out. Their camp had only 40 beds in its medical unit, and they had already hundreds of wounded. This was the French command's nightmare. Amid gruesome scenes, reminiscent of the trench warfare and mass infantry attacks of the First World War, the death toll rises. There are countless acts of heroism on both sides as the Battle of Dien Bien Phu becomes part of military folklore. It also becomes a glorious victory for the Viet Minh and a shameful defeat for the French. French resistance ends on May 7th. Giap orders a full-scale infantry attack. De 
Prince Trees Radio's Colonel Cogni at headquarters in Hanoi. The Viets are everywhere. The situation is very grave. I feel the end is approaching. General Giap. Tonight, we will attack the porcupine's eye and finish it off. Late in the afternoon, Giap hears the fateful news from his 312th division. All enemy soldiers in the command post have surrendered. We have arrested the castries. Suddenly, everyone in the headquarters shouted, clapped their hands and hugged one another. They jumped for joy like children. Some people cried, others stood with their mouths gaping. The faces of others turned pale with shock. French commander de Castries, who has been promoted to brigadier general during the battle, becomes a prisoner of war. He will be released after four months. One of the lucky ones. 1,500 men under his command are dead. Several thousand more are wounded. The Red Cross evacuates a fortunate few hundred of the Viet Minh's 10,000 prisoners. But most are force marched to prisoner of war camps hundreds of kilometers away. Less than 4,000 will survive to be repatriated to France. Min casualties are 15,000 wounded and 8,000 dead. Victory at the Ambien Phu creates a wave of euphoria across the country. Nhok Ang Vu, a civil servant, in the French administration. At first, we couldn't believe it. The Europeans, so big and strong, with all their tanks and aeroplanes, beaten by us. Humble little Vietnamese. Farmers, school teachers, factory workers. We were so proud. With the red flag of revolution flying proudly to mark the Viet Minh victory, the West's anxieties about the march of communism are reinforced, especially in the aftermath of the Korean War. General Jia. The success of the revolution in China had created a balance of power between